Astrospace emerged from stealth mode almost three years ago with a bold vision. It would build inexpensive rockets quickly and with a tolerance for some failure. The idea was simple. If Astra's small satellite customers would accept a bit of risk, the launch company could cut down on its testing, analysis, and redundancy in design. In turn, Astra would pass those launch savings along to customers. Astra Space has carved itself a niche in the burgeoning small satellite launch sector. Many expect, even believed, Astra could be SpaceX's biggest competition. Unfortunately for Astra, their current rocket reliability has even bottomed out at 0% and was canceled after some weird failures. Find out everything about this in today's episode of AlphaTech. Astra manufactures and operates launch vehicles for both commercial and military customers for launching satellites into orbit. The first of these orbital launch vehicles were labeled Rocket 3. Astra's first two rockets, Rocket 1.0 and Rocket 2.0, were suborbital test vehicles without payloads. Although their only launches were reported to be failures, Astra reported they were very successful. Astra reached space, Carmen Line, for the first time on their second Rocket 3 launch, third if one counts in a previous rocket destroyed by fire on the launch pad, but the upper stage did not enter into orbit due to a wrong fuel and oxidizer mixture ratio. The company concluded that this met their goal for the mission and on their next flight, they would fly a commercial payload. Sadly, Astra's next flight on August 28th of 2021 with their fourth Rocket 3 vehicle, Rocket 3.3, carrying a payload for the United States Space Force, continued to fail to reach space. Notably, that is the strangest rocket failure ever. The launch went sideways almost from the moment the engines ignited, with the rocket moving more horizontal than vertical before correcting itself and following an upward trajectory. After 148 seconds, a range safety officer terminated the flight after it moved out of its launch corridor. In a blog post published, Astra Chief Engineer Benjamin Lyon provided more information about this failure and steps the company has taken to ensure it does not happen again. The issue we encountered was something we hadn't seen before, Lyon wrote. Leading up to liftoff, the first stage propellant distribution system provides the rocket with fuel and oxidizer. We designed the system to quickly disconnect and seal when the rocket lifts off. On this launch, propellants leaked from the system, mixed, and became trapped in an enclosed space beneath the interface between the rocket and the launcher. At this point, exhaust from the rocket's five engines ignited the propellant, which in turn cut the connection to the fuel pump electronics. This led to a shutdown of one of the rocket's engines a fraction of a second after the booster lifted off. This caused the rocket to effectively hover before its onboard flight software compensated, allowing the rocket to fly more upward. The four remaining engines, however, did not have enough thrust to boost the rockets into orbit. After that, Lyon said Astra modified the design of the rocket's fueling system so that the kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen oxidizer can no longer mix. It has also been modified to further reduce the risk of leakage during the fueling process. In response to their efforts, on November 20, 2021, Astra Space launched its first successful mission into orbit. The achievement was met with praise from Musk and other figures in the space industry. Congrats! Orbit is not easy, the SpaceX and Tesla CEO wrote in a tweet to Astra at that point. However, the victory did not last long. Particularly embarrassing was the company's most recent launch of Rocket 3 four months ago, when the upper stage shut down early, failing to put two tropical activity monitoring satellites into orbit for NASA. With its five first stage engines generating 32,500 pounds of thrust, the 43-foot-tall Rocket 3.3 roared away from Pad 46 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, putting on a dramatic show for area residents and tourists enjoying a sunny day on nearby beaches. The first stage boosted the payload out of the lower atmosphere, handing off to the single engine powering the rocket's upper stage. All appeared to be going smoothly when, about a minute before the second stage engine was expected to shut down, an onboard rocket cam showed a flash in the engine's exhaust plume. 
The camera view showed what appeared to be a tumble before the video from the rocket cut off. In total, the Rocket 3 line has failed five times in seven launches. Given all this, in August, Astra announced a radical pivot to a larger launch vehicle. Astra will no longer launch the largely unsuccessful Rocket 3. Instead, the company will now pivot to Rocket 4, which is also being called Launch System 2.0. Additionally, the company will target a larger payload capacity for the new rocket, a move that Kemp explained is intended to make the booster more attractive to Mega Constellation customers. Astra has set ambitious targets for payload capacity, 600 kilograms, and price, $5 million, for Rocket 4. This would be an attractive price for such a capability. As advertised, it would have about double the payload capacity of Rocket Lab's Electron vehicle at two-thirds the price. However, there are a couple of key asterisks in Astra's investor presentation. For example, the company notes that 600 kilograms is the target payload to mid-inclination low Earth orbit over the course of the product life cycle. Initially, therefore, it's highly likely that Rocket 4 will not deliver anything close to 600 kilograms to low Earth orbit. As for the price, $5 million is the base bulk launch price for dedicated launches, assuming no price increases due to inflation. Even if Astra can meet these price and payload capacity targets, there are questions about the long-term viability of Rocket 4. A rocket priced and sized like this is roughly equivalent to the Falcon 1 rocket developed by SpaceX in the 2000s. However, in 2009, the company pivoted to the much larger Falcon 9 vehicle after determining the commercial market could not support such a vehicle. Rocket Lab is also working hard to build its medium-lift neutron vehicles to serve the mega-constellation market as Electron has limited use cases. In addition, Kemp emphasized that the transition will take some time for customers and that the Rocket 4 test launches will occur in 2023. We want to do several test flights. We want to test every component of the system. We want to test the engines. We want to test the stages. We want to test the software. We want to test the electronics, he said. The timeline for the changeover to Rocket 4, he added, will have a lot of uncertainty because we want to give the time to the team to do all the testing before we do another commercial launch. He urged that Astra engineers be allowed time to accomplish these milestones and pledged to provide updates as warranted. After all, space is hard. Profitability in rocket propulsion is arguably harder. Good luck to them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and see you next time.